Hello again everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back to the channel. Um, thanks to all the new subscribers. <clears throat> um, funny story, I had an uh, influx of new subscribers in the past uh, probably, uh, let's see, it's uh, probably like five or six days. And uh, in fact, on this past Sunday, I was at a race and uh, came back to my car check my phone to see if I had any messages and I had uh, no messages but I had a ton of emails and I thought well what, what is going on here I, I don't normally get you know, I think there was 30 some emails sitting in my inbox uh, that's uh, a lot more than I normally get especially on a Sunday and uh, it turns out they're all new subscriber notifications from YouTube I thought well okay what's going on here I, I'm happy to get new subscribers uh, but I didn't think my latest video was that uh, groundbreaking or anything like that so I thought well something must have happened and then I noticed a comment in one of the the emails that uh, one of the uh, new subscribers tipped me off it turned out that I had gotten plugged by another user online in one of his videos uh, and the user is imrro.com and if you shorten that up it's his website imrro.com and uh, he actually plugged me on his video on Friday and I gotta tell you, I am super appreciative of all the new subscribers. I am flattered and externally grateful for the plug um, to know that uh, my video was my videos have been worthwhile enough that he took notice of them and and felt like uh, giving me a little boost on on his uh, on his video. And uh, he's got a, quite the subscriber base, and so that boosted my subscriber base. So I thank anybody who came here uh, because of his plug, and a huge thank you to imrro.com um, username, and uh, thank you very much. Now I, I plan to do the same here before the end of this video. I want to uh, give a plug to someone. A lot of the uh, people that I subscribe to, I have a feeling that most. Uh, people are already subscribing to. They've got a large uh, user base. So I was going to look through um, my list of, of subscriptions and just see, um, you know, who else I could possibly do the same thing and pay it forward, if you will. So on that topic, um, I'm sure all of you are well versed in YouTube. Um, you know, we, we probably, it's been around now for for years. Um, but one of the things I do like to do is. Um, on the activity feed, you can oftentimes see people you're subscribing to, uh, what they're commenting on, or maybe what who they have subscribed to, um, and it it feels a little bit like cyber snooping, um, but since it's a public thing, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go ahead and, and view other people's uh, subscription lists, and then see what those people are doing, and uh, it's a neat way to find new channels, and um, you know I like to to rail fan like I said but I also like to uh, view other people's rail fanning videos and, and since I can't travel as much as I'd like to um, you know getting videos from Canada or from the East Coast or West Coast um, you know wherever uh, it's fun to to see different uh, venues around the uh, around North America at least so uh, this week's video uh, I know that I've been working on the diorama last week and I do intend to get back to it. Um, however, um, you probably might want to just skip this part because I'm going to go into a long diatribe about why I haven't been able to work on my railroad lately. Uh, but as you can see behind me, I have a bike up on my bike stand and uh, that's actually a backup bike because my mainstay bike developed a crack in the frame. So I had to track down a backup bike so I could continue racing. Well, getting that set up, tweaked and tuned so I could ride it, you know, you don't just get to hop on a bike. You got to adjust the saddle, you got to adjust the seat height, you got to adjust the handlebars and all that good stuff. So that's consumed quite a bit of my time. Um, that's also a little bit of a, a, a thing. Uh, I'm worried about a trifecta of braking. So first my frame cracked and then the frame on my glasses cracked. These are actually my backup glasses that I can't stand and I'm waiting for new frames. So that's two frames. I'm waiting for a third frame because everything seems to come in threes. So uh, really hoping I don't drop an engine 
on the layout or something worse. But uh, anyway, long story short, I haven't had a chance to work on the diorama. However, I have had a lot of questions regarding the dented gondola that I did, that I kind of featured in the um, sophisticated finishes, the rusting and everything. And I had, I had kind of gone through this a little bit um, without actually going through the process, just described it. Um, and I said that I wouldn't be able to really kind of replicate that until I got more foil. However, uh, user Randy Gelp, um, and you can see him, he just subscribed to me. So if you look at my subscriptions, uh, my subscriber list, he's on there. So Randy, I thank you for your subscription and also for your comment. Um, Randy suggested taking a soda can and using the soda can foil and using that as a substitute or stand-in for the uh, aluminum foil that I had been using. So I thought, let's give this a shot, see what happens. Uh, really encouraged by, uh, you know, especially when I looked at the can, I thought, yeah, this could really work. So uh, I thought we'd do that video this week, and uh, when I have a chance, once the bike is back in order and I have an opportunity, I'll get back to the diorama. I have a um, the point where I want to put some static grass on there, um, trim the, well, kind of what will become the edge of it, and then also make like a pine um, base for it and stain that and make it look nice. I also uh, want to thank all the users who suggested where I can get plexiglass from. I didn't even think of just going to the local Menards or Home Depot or Lowe's um, or any of the local hardware stores and just picking it up from there. So um, thanks for setting me on that uh, right path. And um, so now let's uh, switch over to the workbench and we'll start uh, working on denting up a gondola. All right, so uh, here's our victim. Just a small soda can. Figure we'll punch into this guy. And I want to start by um, just probably cutting the top off, getting rid of that, cut the bottom off, get rid of that, and then try and roll this as flat as we can just to get a, a good working uh, piece of material. And then we'll um, take the car that I'm going to use, uh, measure up the panels, and start cutting it. Now, uh, Randy. Uh, Gelt, the, the commenter on the, my video, uh, had a good idea too. He suggested that um, you could use a chisel or a screwdriver uh, to create the dents. And actually, what I'm really encouraged with is this the tin in this um, soda can holds dents and creases a little better so that it might not be as fragile as the foil that I was using. So once you've got it dented and everything, um, it'll hold it a little bit better. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering is the uh, the painting of it. Once, um, how well this this material is going to hold a primer coat. So that'll be uh, that'll be interesting to see. So uh, let me go ahead and get started here. We'll punch a hole in this guy and and go to town. All right. For those of you who might be tinsmiths or work with. Uh, Tin snips quite often. Um, my father is included in that mix, and uh, so he may cringe as I hack away at this can, but um, we'll give it our best shot here. And you might see some bloodshed right here on YouTube. <laughs> sharp edges in here. I did rinse this out as best I could. Thankfully the, uh, the tin gets, comes pretty clean. So I think what we'll do is we'll just cut down the center here. I'm going to have to uh, cut it anyway. I think we'll just cut straight through the bottom.
right. I think I want to get this top lip off that's curved. It feels like that's going to cause it to crease. So we'll reduce the material a little bit here. Yeah, this, this is actually pretty perfect. Uh, it's a little bit thicker, like I said. Um, it's not necessarily as pliable, uh, if that's the right term, as the foil that I had been using. Um, but I, but I think this would definitely, definitely going to be a, a working idea. So let's clean up this scrap and cut some panels here. Now I kind of want to get it as flat as possible, so I'm going to try just trying to get the that curve out of there. But unfortunately, it might have to do with the. Uh, the way that it was pressed and it's holding that form that might not be the end of the world it's getting a little flatter all right well we're going to call that good get us started anyway so uh, i'm going to just go look for a car and uh, we'll come back with that and uh, get started Okay, so I uh, I found this old Athern uh, Union Pacific gondola. Um, as you can kind of see, it was one of my early weathering attempts with some AIM uh, powder, and then I think uh, I also used um, some uh, the testers clear um, cement, and then uh, just kind of put it in places, and then dabbed it on to create that dry rusting effect. It turned out okay, but you know definitely this this car is a little bit uh older for my my layout now so it kind of just sits in a storage box and the uh the trucks definitely got over rusted i i don't know if any railroad in the right mind would allow these trucks out on their layout on the road but anyway so um get a rough guesstimate on these panel sizes here now this is going to be a little bit of a challenge because you've actually got this sway this uh piece here that comes down, uh, if there's an official term for it, I'm not sure of it. Um, I want to call it a whale belly, but that's definitely not what it is. Um, so I'll grab my rule here. Now it's kind of up to you, um, but I usually, like on this car, I try to go um, between the ridge detail. Um, so you've got the rivets here, and you've got this, um, boy, I am just struggling with words today. Um, the rib here, um, the brace, I guess, we'll go with that. Um, and I wanted to go in between those, figuring that that panel, that this is going to give some strength and resist um, being dented. Um, so I went and uh, went in between them. So on this particular car, I'm going to measure between, this one actually has rivet detail see it. Uh, it has rivet detail all the way uh, up the top. So I'm going to measure in between those and then cut a panel for that. And I think I'll just score this with um, the exacto. I probably could cut that with the exacto, but I'm going to use the tin snip since that's what they're made for. The only other, the only thing I'm worried about with the tin snips is that it's, it has a uh, a serrated edge on it, and it's leaving a serrated edge on the uh, on my cut, which could uh, mar the finish a little bit and make it harder to hide the edge of the uh, the aluminum on the car. So square this off. And now this I think I'm just gonna eyeball a little bit. I'm gonna I'm pushing it up. It's fitting nicely in between the rivet lines, which is really good. Um, and then I'm gonna eyeball it um, for total length here. Just cut it off. So 
square. Oh, okay. I really like that. Um, so here is the panel just set in place. And as you, I don't know if it's going to show up or not, um, but uh, it's sitting really well in between, so the measurement was good. Um, so now I guess what we can go ahead and do is try and uh, dent this panel a little. Okay, um, so uh, based on uh, Randy's uh, comment, he also suggested using uh, some chisels or a screwdriver. So uh, I've got a smaller screwdriver and um, I'm not sure which of the surfaces, uh, which side that the this is going to take paint better. Um, I'm going to go with a Rust-Oleum primer over it um, just because I think that um, I'm going to need something with uh, some more sticking power than a, a hobby paint. So I'm just uh, not sure. Being that this has already got paint or you know an ink on it I guess however they put the label and everything on a soda can I'm not real familiar with that process so I'm not sure if this would provide a better surface or the untreated side now I imagine that there's probably a coating on both sides of these so that that actually might be an in, another interesting point um, I wonder if it'd be worthwhile to actually mar this surface up because I imagine that there is a a coating on here um, because it's food grade and soda does sit in it there has to be some sort of thin film on here so I'm wondering if it wouldn't pay to just take a, a either sandpaper or maybe a scotch bright and uh, must you know kind of mar this up a bit so well I'll experiment with all of that as we do this um, so I think I'm going to start with uh, a piece that's um, the interior of the can facing out. I'll do one with the exterior of the can facing out and then I'm going to scrub this up a little bit with some Scotch-Brite. I'll put some of those on and we'll see which one takes the primer the best um, and uh, if there's any difference, if it, if it matters and uh, we'll go from there. So I think to, uh, so I think to start, um, let me just get uh, Get my chisel and a hammer here. Oh, that just went right through. <laughs> so that, that was a little hard. <laughs> All right, note to self, this is only a soda can. Um, so let's cut another piece. <laughs> and try that again. All right, take two. Maybe we don't need the uh, the hammer at all. Um, actually, I think I want to go with a little bit smaller. We're just going to go with the. I want to go with uh, from the inside here. I'm just kind of gently pressing as I learned from that one. This foil isn't going to take the uh, the abuse too much. So there, let's see if we can get this to show up here. Let's see here. Is it going to focus for me? Ah, I'm having trouble getting this to focus. Um, but you can see I put some dents in there just by pressing on the um, the back side of this. So on this one I did the, the I don't want to call it the painted side, but the logo side and uh, pressing them through. And uh, again, I, I really like the tin material that the soda can is made out of because it, it's holding the, the dents really well. Um, so I think the next step then will be just to take this and I give it a little bit of a bow. Um, you know, I guess I'm trying to, 
I'm trying to achieve, you know, these, these panels will get, as the material is pushed from the inside, they're, they're going to start to bow, and obviously the um, braces are going to keep the that from bowing. Uh, all right, so I'm going to take some Gorilla Glue. And again, I, I think you're going to need a, a super glue, uh, Gorilla Glue of some kind in order to get this to work. You are going with a metal to a plastic, so go with this panel here. The nice thing about the Gorilla Glue is it's it's got a it's it's thicker than most super glues, so it um, it'll help fill in the gap a little bit. Okay, like I said, I, I have a feeling that there's probably a coating on here, and if anybody's familiar with how soda cans are made and you feel like commenting on that, uh, it would probably be uh, really helpful uh, to either confirm my, my theory or uh, disprove it. Either way, um, don't want to misinform anyone. So here I've got uh, just a Scotch-Brite pad, so I'm just going to rough this up a little bit. You know, this is somewhat of a mistake, um, but in some regards, uh, not. Um, actually, I, I think I just discovered something on accident. Um, this is kind of like a, a crayon rubbing that you used to do as a kid, uh, when you put a leaf down and you paper over it and you, you rub the side of a crayon down. Um, there's ballast still sitting on, my lay, on the workbench surface here. Uh, from when I was working on the diorama, and as I pressed this down and started scrubbing, lo and behold, I started to get, I don't know if this will show up or not, but you can see I actually got uh, pits. Um, let's see if they show up here, but you can kind of see I got pits in here, and um, <laughs> that that actually might work. Um, so I'm almost half tempted then to take something a little bit larger and and do the same thing. Maybe maybe in this area um, get something a little bit larger. Maybe even some of the sea salt if I don't crush it will leave larger dents in there. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. these out a little bit more. I think it's creating too much of a, a base. Well, I think I'm just crushing the sea salt unfortunately. But it does beg the, the the question, though. I mean, if you uh, if you had some larger granules of of ballast, or I'm wondering what else I could use here, even to create the creases and stuff. If you just rub over the top of it, it'll create a nice pressing, and it'll be a real random effect too, which which works out really well. So, so kind of a, a little bit of a mistake there, but at the same time might have discovered an alternative here so and they're definitely um, as I'm scrubbing on this you can definitely see that there is a there was a coating there so this roughed up surface may take the paint a little bit better once it's all said and done so I'm going to continue on with this and we'll uh, we'll cut a few more panels so okay after much cutting and uh, you can see I've got quite a bit of soda can left over actually so I've got some of the panels all glued on uh, just using the Gorilla Glue. Um, this took a, a process of a few days actually uh, to get these all on, but uh, they're on pretty securely. So you can see I, I varied them a little bit, so I've got some that had the, uh, the printed side uh, just scuffed up with the scotch Brite pad. I've also got some that were not scuffed up, and then also some that uh, the inside of the can scuffed up. So it'll give us uh, some variety and, and see what happens when we apply the spray paint. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put a base coat of uh, Rust-Oleum on these 
and then we'll come back. And you can see I just uh, I dented each panel, bowed them out a little bit, you know, trying to vary it a little, you know, like it looked, you know, like the material inside was was hitting it. So so that's that. They're all applied, and uh, we'll get a coat of paint on here now. We'll come back. Okay, well, uh, so I got uh, the all the panels on, dented them all up, and uh, went ahead and put a coat of Rust-Oleum Primer Gray on. Um, so there's a, a few things I noticed, um, and it's it's not really the fault of the tin can or anything. Um, I think it's just the nature of of doing this. So if you can see, uh, I don't know if it'll show up or not, uh, but when I put the primer coat on the panels, you can kind of see the panels. They're um, the edges. Uh, now you're getting some black lines in between. You know, you, you can kind of see them a little bit, and uh, you can kind of see on the other side. So I think it's going to take a little bit of um, creative weathering uh, to to kind of hide those. So we'll see what happens once I get another coat of paint on. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna upload this video and I want to follow up with because uh, this is still kind of tacky, um, so I don't want to put a another coat of paint over the top of this until it dries. But I would like to get a video up this week and and this is already probably getting pretty long. Um, so I did the basics. You kind of got the idea of of what um, how to go about doing it. So you can see you can take a, a tin can and turn it into a dented gondola. I, I'm really pleased with the results now that I don't know if it's going to show up real well on camera, but uh, once the primer coat was on it, it, it really kind of, it seemed like all the panels took the paint the same. Um, and uh, the one thing that I was thinking of as I was doing this, what's nice is, is that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to a primer, or a, so summarize, I'm going to put a rust color coat underneath all of this. Then I'm going to let that dry, come back with some um, sea salt, and attempt the sea salt weathering, uh, much like I did on the uh, grain tower. And my thought was, is that what I'll do is I'll put the rust color on on first, put the sea salt down, come back with the um, whatever color, I was maybe like a flat black or something like that, uh, decal it, you know, remove the sea salt and then decal it. And I'm thinking that hopefully with a rust undercoat um, and the panels dented, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just work the salt into areas um, where the dents are and stuff like that. And then the other thing I can do is I can actually scratch the paint off and reveal metal underneath. So it'll look like it was actually banged and, and you've actually got a metal um, surface underneath. So. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. It's it's an experiment. Um, you know, if this car turns into something, it might just be become a maintenance of way uh, car on the layout. So if it if it turns out well enough, so I hope this helped um, kind of walk you through the process. And to Randy Gelb, great idea on the soda can. Now, as you can see, it I think it turned out really well. Well, thanks a lot for uh, sticking with me through this one. Uh, like I said, I, I want to get a video up um, this this week so I'm going to cut this one a little short that project isn't fully done yet but um, I want to keep them keep it a little bit shorter uh, get the video up I know um, as the videos get a little bit longer it can be hard to watch the whole thing and I can actually look at my YouTube statistics and you can see how many people actually watch an entire video and um, it does taper off the longer they are that is for sure so we'll keep it short we'll follow up with a part two on this maybe next week maybe I'll get to the diorama um, but uh, I did want to do the uh, the pay it forward and uh, again a huge thank you to IMRRO.com um, IMRRO.com if you go to his website he's got a forum running um, big thank you again for, for the, the plug on your site and I thought I'd take a moment to plug user Brian 102256 and I'll throw his his a link to his uh, page in um, in the show notes and the in the comments field um, he's uh, actually doing a great job uh, videotaping his new layout room and what's kind of nice is is that he's not only showing uh, the layout construction uh, or getting to it uh, but just the 
the process he's going through and, and putting up the stud walls and, you know, kind of just uh, laying out the room. And uh, I, I, that's, that's real critical. That's one thing if, you know, you look around my layout and I, I didn't finish the walls and, you know, probably should have put drywall up and insulated them, put a floor down and stuff like that. Now I'm kind of stuck. Uh, well, Brian's doing it the right way. He's, he's finishing his room off first. You know, he's getting everything set up um, so that way once the layout is in, it's more of a fixture of the room than the layout just being there. So uh, he's got some great tips, uh, great videos, um, and I, I, I like just watching it uh, from the model railroad perspective, but also from the construction perspective. Kind of gives me an idea uh, if I ever have a, a project like that in the basement. So again, I'll put a link to his show in the uh, show notes. And uh, Brian, kudos on the, on the channel. Enjoy watching it. So I hope that uh, I can pay it forward a little and, and get you some subscribers as well. So um, again, thanks to everyone who subscribed. I hope this channel is worth it. I hope the plug was worth it that you uh, came over here. And I uh, hope you got something out of this. Randy Gelp, again, great, uh, great suggestion on the uh, soda can. And um, I think in the future I'm going to try uh, using that idea again with like maybe a box car and, and you know, just some other stuff. Even on buildings and stuff like that, it, it could uh, provide um, some nice uh, detail. Um, you know, trailers uh, for your intermodal, you know, those get banged up quite a bit. So it's all good stuff. So thanks a lot, everybody, and uh, hope to see you again uh, next week.